everyone. A good morning for me. Good afternoon, I think, for most of you. Um, um, my name is Pierre Rougier. Um, I'm live in New York as part of Fashion Futurum Forum. We're having a live session uh, to discuss um, a vast topic, which is an invitation to dream. So um, I started a company called PR Consulting in New York 23 years ago. Uh, we specialize originally mainly <coughs> in, the, sorry, in fashion uh, public relations at the time. It was a little old, it's a little old fashioned now, but that's where we were. And uh, we've built a company now in New York and in uh, Paris that represents a lot of fashion designers. Um, among them, Ralph Simmons or Dries Van Noten or uh, Marine Serre and many others. We've been working with Nicolas Gestier for that 20 years uh, in various um, houses. So, uh, but we can discuss that later. Um, I would like for each of you to introduce yourselves and then we'll start a a conversation where I think you're going to ask questions and we'll make it lively. So I'm going to start on my screen with Timo. Introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for having us all today. My name is Timo and I'm a visual artist. I'm based here in Germany, in Munich. And yeah, you may know me for my collaborations with brands such as Valentino, Burberry or Sara. And yeah, I'm mainly posting my work on Instagram, but I also started an, an agency called The Kates. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Siddhartha? Siddharth, sorry. We can't hear you. Huh? Siddharth, we can't hear you. Hmm. Shall I go to Paola, maybe, and then see with Siddhartha the, the sound? Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm Paola, and I'm a digital and 3D artist. I'm uh, currently based in Italy. Uh, I work um, both exhibiting my art globally, uh, but also uh, I work for more commercial projects on commissions. Um, yes. Uh, Florentina? Hello, my name is Florentina Leitner. I just graduated from the Antwerp Royal Academy of Fine Arts after I got a job as first women's wear designer at Dries van Otten, um, mm -hmm. uh, where I now recently quit because I want to focus on starting up my own brand because um, I got a lot of um, buyers uh, from several shops coming in and want to focus now mainly on that. So, yeah. Uh, Alexander? Hi everyone, my name is Alex. Uh, my cousin and I, we created our, you know, fashion little brand uh, in 2016 and we still on, on. <laughs> uh, yeah, happy for us. So bravo thank, for that. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, we are focusing on, you know, minimalism actually and uh, we try to, you know, to enter new something fresh in our cold Russian winter. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And then Paula? Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, well, so mm. my name is Paula Lari, and I'm a 22 years old fashion designer from Madrid. As Florentina, I have just graduated from university. But um, this past, these past years, I've been more investigating sustainable textiles and the past collection that I worked that is like the main collection. Um, I created pieces where uh, nature grow into the textiles. And with that uh, collection, I've been published in many magazines as Forbes and others and right now I'm working I'm leading a research project here in Madrid with a group of designers also to create innovative sustainable textiles okay well thank you all for being here um, so I think maybe we start with a, a question from one of you and then we um, you know have a conversation right um, uh, Siddharth, do you have volume now? Do you have sound? Sorry, I forgot you. Sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? Oh, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, so nice to meet you, everyone, and sorry for the interruption. I'm Siddharth from New Delhi, India, 
and uh, I work for a sustainable brand, which mainly are revolve around a lot of upcycling, recycling, and crafts mainly. So my philosophy is mainly to uh, to have enough things around you to create something, and maybe we can go back to something pure in future. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks. Okay. So since uh, you closed, now you're going to open it up. What's your question? Do you have a question for me that I can answer and then we're going to start that way? Yeah. So um, as all our brands are coming from different countries, how do we uh, approach international platform or uh, let's say, uh, I mean, how to get uh, recognized globally uh, mm -hmm. within you know, we didn't going through a traditional way. Like, wh what are the process of uh, getting into global PR? Yeah, that's the, that's, we go right into a very large question, obviously. Uh, it's uh, it's complicated. I think the the beauty of the, the time we live in is that you can actually do it. Um, uh, you know, local has become global and, and vice versa. So the, the difference for, from many years ago from the traditional system is you have at your fingertips a lot of opportunities to communicate with the world. I think the, the, two, th the two things I can say which always work is um, be singular, do something that really, really uh, sets you apart where you live, that really represents what you do, where you are for a community that's close to you, because yeah. the community that's close to you is a community that's going to be able to expand your network globally. And I think that's something that, you know, is really, I think to me, fascinating now is when you can from New Delhi, from Moscow, from Madrid, from wherever you are, if you start by addressing really your community, the, your peers, wherever you are, and you have to identify them because you have, usually a singular voice and that singular voice is usually heard by first people around you those people around you are going to expand the circle i think it, it's a little bit like a an old-fashioned way but now you have a global network called you know um <laughs> we know what it's called yeah. we, we know what they're called yeah and, and but i really think that first stick to who you are where you are really don't start thinking about you know, is it going to resonate on the other side of the world? You cannot start thinking too much about this. I think you're much better served thinking about what informs who you are, what you do locally, and talk to the people who are similar to you. These people have networks. These networks grow, grow, grow. And I think it usually reaches someone, you know, who will have a larger voice and will put you on a, on a larger platform and so on and so on it goes usually when i <clears throat> you know when i started the the, uh, the the work i do you were desperate to get like one fashion editor's attention somehow one way or another now you know everybody is a fashion editor pretty much so <laughs> but really just stick to who you you know who really what really it makes you who you are where you are that's, that's to me the key of, of, of being uh, an interesting voice that the rest of the world we want to hear. Um, because, you know, fashion is, uh, is looking for, for a way to express also diversity. And, and this diversity comes from voices that express themselves from where they are. Um, so I think it's a very important uh, way to do it. I think Florentina, you have a question or you wanted to add something? Yes. Yeah about this topic of uh, that you need to start where you are uh, nowadays we have like all these uh, platforms like instagram where you already can yeah. see your statistics and where your audience is and uh, what would you recommend when your audience for example i'm from vienna austria actually i moved now to antwerp and i saw my main audience is actually in england london so what do you think should i go should do you recommend like young designers to move to a bigger city because I always have the feeling like everyone is like pushing uh, young designers. Yeah, you need to move to bigger cities like New York, uh, London, Paris. 
But I feel also quite comfortable in Antwerp at the moment, and especially with like this whole pandemic situation going on. I don't feel ready to move yet, but I also see that my audience is more in different cities. So I thought it fits with this local mm. question. So what are your thoughts about it? <laughs> I mean, you know, you, I mean, I'm going to go very <clears throat> basic. You have very, you have various examples, you know, in the cities where you come from, Vienna, you know, we have a, you know, at least one designer that stands out that came from Vienna and, and Helmut, uh, Lang. Helmut yes. obviously. And then Antwerp is not a bad place either to start, you know, a fashion platform. We have a few of those in Antwerp. So, you know, I mean, going back very, and, and most of the designers from Antwerp have stayed in Antwerp, you know, um, I mean, except for those who took contracts around the world for, you know, other houses. I think more and more, if your audience is in London, that doesn't mean you have to be in London. You can cater to uh, or, or talk to an audience in London and express, you know, yourself to them via all the social media platforms that are available to you. I think what you can do also, and I think that's really important, is have a dialogue with that, with the communities that are over there and then start forming a dialogue with them where they can disseminate their vision of where you are. I think there's a, a network of creatives that you can reach through the communities that are local to your audience, whether they are in Antwerp, if you live in Antwerp, uh, or, or in London, even if you're based in Antwerp. And I think I see, and it's not, it's not, I mean, it's certainly not new to all of you, but to me, I think it being more and more um, a way of, of spreading your, your message or, or your vision is you have a local a community of creative people. And if you let them where your community is, if you let them take a hold of your work, play with it, work with it, allow it, then, then it grows that way as well. And that's the beauty of, of, of social media, you know, with all the horror of it, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of beauty to it. As you can, you can find in London, look at all these people that probably follow your work or are interested in your work, see their work, look at their work if there's creative people, talk to them, engage with them, have them do something with you, and then you create that network over there. And then you're part of a creative network as well as just a, a not just an audience. Does that make sense? I don't know. You yeah, guys know probably totally. more than I do. Yeah. No, totally. Um, uh, and uh, I also, I, I have now a PR agency in London who's mm -hmm. uh, well, making yeah. them kind of my shoots at there. And that's also probably why my audience is there also yeah, really that, I mean, at the moment. Yeah, hopefully. Yes. That would, that would make, <laughs> that would prove that a PR agency can be useful sometimes. That's good. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, sorry if someone else wants to ask now something, but uh, you can go forward. But uh, one well, more question would be for you, because as you're um, having this great PR agency, what is something, um, uh, when you see new designers which are applying for your agency, what is something that catches your eye? What is something that makes you, con yeah, what convinces you to, to take them into your PR? Uh, I think it goes back to what, uh, to, to what I was uh, telling uh, Siddharth earlier. I think I, I started working very early in fashion, a little randomly, but somehow with with uh, designers or, or houses that had a very, very, very strong identity. I worked with, first of all, a house of Hermes, which you know was not a design, a fashion house, but you know. And then I worked with Yoji Yamamoto in the eighties, and I worked with Marta Margiela when he started. So that shaped because I didn't have such an informed vision on fashion that shaped my vision on fashion, which was that you know fashion houses and the aesthetics that they put out to the world or to the outside are a little world of that onto themselves you know and i've been which is an, an identity that is theirs and theirs truly and theirs deeply and you know when you work with yoji yamamoto especially at the time you know you were not really let's put it this way you were not exactly allowed to wear a you know printed flower shirt uh, unless, you know, Yoji had decided that a printed flower show was acceptable that season, but you were pretty much in black, you know, and you wore a white shirt and that was that, you know, so there was a very, that was the aesthetic, but then everything that was behind it was completely driven by that vision that you know, there was a way to present yourself to the world that informed a lot of, you know, things about yourself. Um, so I come from that and when I see, you know, a, a designer or, or a house, and I shouldn't say I, because I have partners. I have my partner here, Sylvie piquet who has the same background as mine, and a partner in Paris called Nathalie Ours, who worked for Yoji Yamamoto for 18 years. 
So we all have that same kind of way of looking at it. It's like, is there a, a kind of world uh, that 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 house, that vision, that creative person carries with themselves that we can easily plug into some communication tools? You know, if you have to invent the whole thing, that that's a different proposition, and we can do that as well. But that's called a branding exercise on a product. If if you have someone that comes to you as a designer or as a creative person, then you have to see how that vision can easily, uh, uh, you know, automatically, um, I don't know, edit what works and what doesn't work for it. You know, when I worked with um, Martha Margelin at that time, or when you work with Nicolas Gesquier, or you, they all think their world, their vision is so clear or so, powerful that things come to you as a PR agency or as a media relation agency. And you very quickly see uh, no, obviously not, you know, and that kind of like for us informs a little bit how we see an identity, a very strong point of view, etc. So to, it's a little vague as an answer, but because uh, it's not just a matter of taste, you know, if it was only a uh, you know, what me and, and the partners in the agency or the senior people in the industry or the junior people in the agency for that matter, what we like to wear or not, then that would limit very much, you know, what we can do. So there has to be more than that. And it, it is usually yet yeah, some sort of a, a, a feeling that there's a world there, there's a universe or a little universe that travels with that person or with this group of people or with that, you know, vision. So it's a little vague, yeah. but that's what I can say. So Siddharth, I go back to your answer, to your question. It really is something that has to inform who you are, where you are. And that's really, to me, the basis of everything. Okay. Um, I'm going to go, I can't remember the order in which I started. So uh, Paola, you want to, start to, to ask a question? Yeah, so my question would be from a very, uh, I'm a freelancer, a digital artist. I make digital models. Uh, well, for the fashion industry, um, mm. and so my question will be from my perspective because often uh, um, young, like recent graduates, young artists and freelancers like myself are uh, very trend aware and even cutting edge often. But it's hard for us to um, catch the attention of big brands. Uh, you obviously work for a lot of them. And I would like to know how, if, if you see that in future, the process of these big brands working with like individuals like us uh, would be more easier, more fluid, um, and also more inclusive, because usually like the fashion world feels very exclusive even with who brands work with. Um, so I wonder if soon this yeah. <laughs> will change a bit. Um, I think, okay, my answer might be more wishful thinking than a, than a, a, mess, a manifestation of the truth or the reality, but I think, I think what's happening is, um, and if you want to talk about the big brands, I guess you talk about the mammoth, the big, like, you know, with, with a lot of, uh, of means and a lot of uh, firepower, I think, um, the, the the world um, the, the world has uh, has forced those brands to be way more inclusive of uh, the voices to or, or the the yeah the expression of the the, uh, the countries the communities the people they're talk they're, they're trying to talk to and by talk to I mean sell something to huh? we're all clear so but I think. And I think this is opening the door for absolutely a lot of opportunities for young creative, new talents uh, uh, to, to, to make their way in. Uh, because there is a, a thirst for, uh, in, all those, uh, in all those houses, in all this, like, and, and small, small and big, but in, in those, the, the large brands have a thirst for, yeah, local voices, real voices that represent a certain community um, uh, creatively, not just, uh, you know, writing or, but creatively that propose that have offers and, and, and that can prop, 
pro have propositions that are interesting to to them. So, but but again, the way usually you catch the attention of of um, of a lot of larger brand is through the work you do with smaller brands. It's always the same thing mm -hmm. is, you know, because uh, very often a, a small brand uh, has less constraints to, to and, and has a clearer, very much more direct kind of, you know, creative impact. They have less to contend with. So, so that's usually why big brands look at the smaller brands because they have, there's something there that you can express there that you can express to a larger brands. But um, so that's uh, th that's to me the the, the way it is continue with your uh, with, with your local local community and and the ones that the ones that are yours and that are friends and that you know allow you to have a clearer less polluted you know expression of your vision because less constraints, less commercial constraints, less you know, ethical constraints in terms of what the ethos of the brand itself is, et cetera. So I, I would be, you know, that's your way in. But yeah, there's a, there's a way in. Timo, you want to go? Sorry, I'm, I'm talking too much, so we're going to have to uh, go yeah. ahead, Timo. Yeah, actually, uh, when I did my research about you, all the names come up. The most powerful specialist in PR and, and things like this. So I'm wondering, actually, my question is very personal. Um, let's assume you could go back in time to when you're 20 or even 25. What would you give yourself as an advice? What, what would you do different or what's the advice? Uh, I I. I don't think too much of what I, I would do different because uh, I can't I can't do anything different. But uh, I would just say you know um, don't um, trust your instinct. That's what I would say. Trust your instinct. Your instinct. Your instincts are usually um, are usually right uh, if you listen to if you can have a clear voice into yourself or a clear ear into your inner voice your instincts are usually right that's what i would tell myself and i would tell to everyone does that answer your question yeah all right um we're gonna alexander you want to ask a question uh yes um i would like to ask you um we're all talking about the local market that we have to focus on right now, mm -hmm. you know, after post COVID time. And because uh, this is market is more important to us right now than global, right? Because uh, our customer is near you, right? Then, mm -hmm. you know, in the other country or city. And that's why and now uh, I would like to ask you about uh how try not to try how to make our best to find you know some investment or finance or this kind of stuff money it's all about money to collect <laughs> something you know you have to uh have money to do this to then to deliver it to the customer to sell it at the end of this so my question is, what's the, you know, several ways to find this investment? Oh, I, I know it's, it's kind of, it's kind of big, but <clears throat> just, you know, couple, couple words about uh, that. That is not really my, uh, my strong suit, I must say. Uh, I've been known to be <laughs> the one who, you know, tells them how to spend the money more than how to No, but I mean, I'm joking. <laughs> That's usually how media agencies are perceived. Oh, they just like, you know, want to spend money. I don't know. I think there's, there's so many scenarios. I think it's again, stand out where you are, stand out in your, in your community. And, and when I say, you know, to, to go back and to Florentina, you know, when I say your community, maybe it's not local, but it's the community that locally is following you on your social media, if it's not geographically local. So I think that's really your, your best opportunity because somewhere in there, there's going to be someone who looks and says like, wow, this is a powerful voice there. 
So someone's going to come and look and hopefully someone will want to penetrate with you this community or you would be a vehicle to something and they want to invest. You know, that's usually my, I go back to really focusing on what's at your fingertip and your grasp, you know, and then hopefully the financing part is such a, you know, crapshoot. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's a bad, listen, it's the, it's, it's the basic question of, you know, um, of how you keep it going. Huh? Um, I have one, my, Paolo, you have one question. I haven't had a chance to ask you a question. Paola, you want, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> okay, it was more of a curiosity, in fact, because in my case, for example, sustainability is like the main value of what I try to create and design. And knowing that you have, you work and you have worked for such powerful brands, mm -hmm. would you say that sustainability is truly being into a, a taking into account these days that there's a change or that maybe there's uh, some brands that are actually starting to implement sustainability as part of their uh, brand image? I'm going to tell you something about sustainability, which I think is really something that I, I'm discovering more and more. Um, whether big brands, big companies, big, believe it or not, in it or not, it's kind of, it's, it, it's grown out of something similar to activism, right? So, and the big brands, whether they believe in it or not, if, you, if the voice is loud enough and it affects the customer enough, they'll do it. So my answer to this is don't question the motives, you know, whether they want to do it or not. Just make sure, because you're the generation that's going to push it, make sure that your voice is loud enough about how important it is to you that those brands can't ignore it. That's the only true way of getting in there. And the brands are listening, trust me. All the big groups, all the big brands, they're listening, they're doing it, they're making the effort, but usually because they're like, it's good for business and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, I think, but that's, you are the voices that can make this go through, be loud about it. It's activism and I, I discover the power of, of this more and more is activism drives a lot of the causes that we're seeing around the world right now and that's one of them. And I think that's how it's gonna get in. I'm so happy to hear about that because <laughs> actually they Absolutely. have also the power to to make it louder. Yeah, know. but the power is your. It starts with you. Be a be a loud enough voice that they can ignore it. Then they will be the megaphone. They will amplify it because they will have to. Otherwise, they'll be like, "Eh, we have to." Even if they don't truly believe in it, it doesn't matter. Just don't question that. It's a waste of energy. Just keep going forward and speak and push and don't be, don't compromise on it. I think we have only a couple of minutes left. Um, each of you, has everyone, has Florentina, you wanted to say something, sorry. Uh, no, I just wanted to, to tell to Alexander about your question with the financing. There's an amazing talk from BOF founder um, Imran Ahmed. Um, oh yeah, he's good at that, that, yeah. And you can listen to that. I listened yeah. to it yesterday and he's really explaining how to get fundings and the best yeah. way is to win competitions. But that's also a question for you. I wanted to ask if, what do you think about all those competitions like LVMH? And oh, well, um, uh, if yeah. you know, if you know if they're like continuing, because now after this pandemic or when Corona started, they canceled, for example, already the student I applications. Mm -hmm. And also now, so far, I didn't get any news if they will do it the coming years. I do not know. So I, I don't have okay. the answer to this. But yeah, those competitions are very important. I think we have a minute left. Oh. Uh, I wanted you okay. to each of you say what was your dream. Siddharth, you want to say something? Yeah, so there's one. I wanted to ask. Uh, we have PR agency for media coverage uh, globally or uh, nationally, but are there any agencies who helps you with uh, um, increasing your sales or something like that? Oh, that I don't know. Oof. I don't know. But Siddharth, I think we have to go. No, it's. Uh, I think unfortunately that's the end of the session. But I invite you. I, you know, get my. You have my email, so send me an email if we haven't had a chance. And I still want to hear what your dream was, so yeah. or what your dream is. So send email me email the dreams. Yeah. Yes, please do. And uh, everybody, thank you so much. I think we have a yeah thirty seconds left is what I'm being told. So we're gonna go and uh, uh, hopefully uh, it was interesting enough or informative enough for all of you and other people who might have been listening in. But thank you. It was very. It was great for me. I always love to hear. 
what so <laughs> matters much. to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank thank you, you very thank much. Very, very much. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep bye it going bye. offline. Yes. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.